Okay, part three for the thoracic spine is strengthening. Now, if you've missed parts one and two, that was mobility, so we went through rotation, extension. Now we're doing strengthening, and we're working on mostly the static extension strength of the thoracic spine using the shoulder blade as retractors and a little bit of anti-rotation. So there's three exercises that we go through. I'll show you the first one. What you'll need is some sort of decent band, okay? So not a really heavy one unless you're quite a big person. This is a mini loop power band. This is probably about right. Um, tie that around a pole. It could be attached to anything that's solid, okay? Now this one, we're aiming for retraction of your shoulders. So this may seem like, oh, you're doing retraction exercise, but what you're aiming to do is be in a sort of like a long sitting position, or you could be in a cross-legged position. But what we're trying to do is eliminate movement at the lumbar spine, all right? So we're just doing retraction movement at the thoracic spine. So when we do our retraction movement, we'll also get our extensors working. So we're working on our extensor chain down through here in our thoracic spine. And remember, the thoracic spine is also about your scapular retractors, so you need both. So in this position here, what you wanna aim for is putting your thoracic spine into extension, okay? So get your thoracic spine so it's already preloaded into extension. So you, if you like, you're doing a static isometric work of those extensors in extension, okay? Then, because you, to get to that position, you've done a little bit of lumbar extension. To set this up, you then drop the lumbar part. So you go, think of that's flexion. You want to go extend the thoracic and then push that lumbar back into flexion. So you're just concentrating on your thoracic. And then from there, so you're fully extended thoracic, lumbar's a little bit sort of neutral slash flexed, then you work on trying to do a maximal retraction with your shoulder blades. And then when you come back, the shoulder blades retract, but you don't lose the thoracic extension. So retraction shoulder, so like a row with a strong band like that, and I've taken out entirely my legs, I've taken out my lower back, there's no stress there, I'm just working on that. A few things to note, when you come back and you let your shoulder blades go into protraction, don't let it drop into there, okay? So you've got to keep thoracic extension, lumbar neutral, and then just pull back and do your thoracic isometric extension and scapular retraction. And then you know you're, you're lighting up all those muscles down your spine in that mid part of your back. Now that's a really nice one to work on. So think of it as, you know, you're sort of almost doing a bit of isometric really work for the thoracic spine. There is some extension work going on there, but you're setting it up into extension and then you're loading it. So you're not sort of going from, what you're not doing is you're not going flexion, extension, flexion, extension like that. We're actually sort of preloading, we're putting them into extension and then we add the load with this. So it's a different way of, of thinking, but it's a much better spinal stability way of strengthening. So that's the way you gotta think about it. Think of the stability. You're getting stability through the strengthening work by what position you're putting your spine in and then adding the load, if that makes sense. You'll see that come through with these other ones. So that's a really nice one to do. And remember, the retraction stuff switches on all those muscles and that's the stuff you need. Okay, so that's your first one. The second thing I want you to do is work on what we call a Y position, like a Swiss ball Y. Now, you can use a ball, you could use a sofa, you could use a bench in the gym. Balls are just really easy. So this sort of thing, again, there's no uh, real movement much at the thoracic spine. There's not much thoracic extension anyway. Remember, most of the movement comes through rotation. So don't try and hunt for trying to extend the spine to strengthen it. You're probably gonna just start moving at the lower back, okay? So this one, you've gotta set yourself up in a way that you may need to look yourself in the mirror to see what your lower back's doing because the first thing that you don't want to do is start extending at your back, okay? You don't want to be extending at your lower back because this is not a lower back extension exercise. For this purpose, we're trying to actually do some thoracic, a little bit of thoracic extension, but mostly isometric again, and then adding the load of the arms. So watch this one. So what I'm going to try and do is go into a Y position with my hands, 
like that. So if you imagine like this is the top left and right of a Y, so you imagine my arms are the top of the Y, and that's the bottom of the Y. Um, from this point here, I want to keep that neutral. So if you're looking in the mirror, you might want to just go, okay, I need to sort of get myself into perhaps a little bit more of a neutral rather than extension. So go to that position there. And then you've got to use your core, which is great, switch that on, to hold that position there to keep that neutral to stop it extending. Okay, so think neutral here or even a little bit flexed is fine. Core on here. And then when I extend, think about a little bit of lift of the chest off the ball. So there's a little bit of thoracic extension, just a tiny bit, not a massive amount, because hey, that's just going to be your lower back. So it's only a little bit. So from here, a little bit of that, and then the load for my thoracic spine is here. So I'm trying to reach as high as I can, and what that'll do is switch on all my muscles down my back to try and give me elevation, if you like, of my shoulders. And yes, you're going to use retractors and traps, but it's going to work that thoracic spine extensors chain so well without massive load through your shoulders. So this is a good one for even shoulder injury people who have, you know, can't handle load through their shoulders, but they need to work on posture and strength through their back. This really lights you up through the mid, right down between between your shoulder blades, down through the spine. It's fantastic for postural stuff. So. This one is very similar to that in a way that you're not trying to achieve a massive amount of thoracic extension during the strengthening phase. You're almost trying to go into extension, hold that isometrically, and then add on load so the muscles then react, and that's your strengthening part, okay? So those two is the ones you'll start with. Then we go through a little bit of an anti-rotation type one. So for this one, it's a bent over row. Now you've probably all done bent over rows before, but, what you can do is do a bent over row on a high bench, you can do it on a sofa, you could do it on your bed, anything like that. What I like to do is have a reasonably low box. Now the reason for that is to stop you doing silly things. So if you have a box that's perhaps only two or maybe three stages high, what you then do is think about if I was doing a bent over row, that position, okay? You're gonna do it on a box, so your elevation is not very high off the ground, okay? So at that point there, I can't really go any further than there, if that makes sense. So when you're in this position here, all I wanna do is then just row from that position there, and then come down. Now, what that allows you to do is get the scapular protraction retraction part, but it stops you rotating. Because with this one, we don't want to try and rotate. We're trying to do an anti-rotation. We're trying to use the thoracic spine to strengthen up and hold that rotation. So when the arm goes forward, it's holding. Okay? So in this, I mean, you're most welcome to do rotation stuff. But for this exercise, it's like an anti-rotation one. So having it close to the ground means I can't go any further. Okay? I can't rotate down in there and then rotate up. At the same time, when I pull that through... I don't want to do that, okay? So I'm trying to train my body. I'm trying to train stability in the spine, right? You're going to use the strengthening tool to gain strength and stability in there. What you're going to have to do, turn that core on, keep that lumbar spine in neutral, okay? In that position, be very strict with yourself. Retract your shoulder blade, pull through, release this, and then release the shoulder blade to neutral. Okay, so same deal, retract, pull through, release, and release. Now you'd start off with something like, that's only eight kilos, okay? It depends on how heavy you are, how strong you are. But the idea is to build that up in strength and increase that in load, if you like. So it's more and more and more resistance for that. But as you get heavier, be careful that you don't start sort of compensating and really trying to reef it off the ground, okay? It may be too hard for your arm, that sort of thing. Remember, it's just, we need resistance load to affect what's happening in the spine. So those three are sort of go-to rehab strengthening exercises for thoracic spine. For people who've had injuries or sprains or pain going through the thoracic spine, they're weak, that's our go-to to start with. 
then they move on to other things at the gym where they start moving and start extending. Give that a shot. See you next time.